The Origins of Money by Carl Menger. Chapter 4 Commodities as More or Less Saleable. It is an error in economics as prevalent as it is patent that all commodities at a definite point of time and in a given market may be assumed to stand to each other in a definite relation of exchange. In other words, may be mutually exchanged in definite quantities at will. It is not true that in any given market, 10 hundredweight of one article equals 2 hundredweight of another, which equals 3 pounds of a third article, and so on. The most cursory observation of market phenomena teaches us that it does not lie within our power when we have bought an article for a certain price to sell it again forthwith at the same price. If we but try to dispose of an article of clothing, a book, or a work of art which we have just purchased in the same market, even though it be all once before the same juncture of conditions has altered, we shall easily convince ourselves that the fallaciousness of such an assumption, the price at which any one can at pleasure buy a commodity at a given market and at a given point of time, and the price at which he can dispose of the same at pleasure are two essentially different magnitudes. This holds good of wholesale as well as retail prices. Even such marketable goods as corn, cotton, pig iron cannot be voluntarily disposed of for the price at which we have purchased them. Commerce and speculation would be the simplest things in the world if the theory of the objective equivalent in goods were correct. If it were actually true that in a given market and at a given moment commodities could be mutually converted at will in definite quantitative relations, could in short at a certain price be as easily disposed of as acquired. At any rate, there is no such thing as a general saleableness of wares in this sense. The truth is that even in the best organized markets, while we may be able to purchase when and what we like at a definite price, we can only dispose of it again when, when and as we like at a loss. The loss experienced by anyone who is compelled to dispose of an article at a definite moment as compared with the current purchasing prices is a highly variable quantity as a glance at trade and at market of specific commodities will show. If corn or cotton is to be disposed of at an organized market, the seller will be in a position to do so in practically any quantity at any time he pleases, at a current price, or at most, with a loss of only a few pence on the total sum. If it be a question of disposing in large quantities of cloth or silk stuffs at will, the seller will regularly have to contend himself with a considerable percentage of diminution in the price. Far worse is the case of one who, at a certain point of time, has to get rid of astronomical instruments, anatomical preparations, Sanskrit writings, and such hardly marketable articles. If we call any goods or wares more or less saleable according to the greater or less facility with, with which they can be disposed of at a market, at any convenient time, at current purchasing prices, or with less or more diminution of the same we can see by what has been said that an obvious difference exists in the connection between commodities. Nevertheless, and in spite of its great practical significance, it cannot be said that this phenomenon has been much taken into account in economic science. The reason of this is in part of the circumstance that investigation into the phenomenon of price has been directed almost exclusively to the quantities of the commodities exchanged, and not as well as the greater or less facility with which wares may be disposed of at normal prices. In part also the reason is the thoroughgoing abstract method by which the saleableness of goods has been treated without due regard to this, all the circumstances of the case. The man who goes to market with his wares intends as a rule to dispose of them by no means at any price whatever, but as such as corresponds to the general economic situation. If we are going to inquire into the degrees of saleableness in goods, 
so as to show its bearing upon practical life, we can only do so by consulting the greater or less facility with which they may be disposed of at prices corresponding to the general economic situation, that is, at economic prices. A commodity is more or less saleable according as we are able, with more or less prospect of success, to dispose of it at prices corresponding to the general economic situation at economic prices. The interval of time, moreover, within which the disposal of a commodity at the economic price may be reckoned on is of great significance in an in, in inquiry into its degree of saleableness. It matters not whether the demand for a commodity be slight or whether on the grounds its saleableness be small. If its owner can only bide this time, he will finally, and in the long run, be able to dispose of it at economic prices. Since, however, this condition is often absent in the actual course of business, there arises for practical purposes an important difference between those commodities on the one hand, which we expect to dispose of at any given time, at economic or at least approximately economic prices, and such goods on the other hand, respecting which we have no such prospect, or at least not in the same degree, and to dispose of which at economic prices, the owner foresees it will be necessary to wait for a longer or shorter period, or else to put up with a more or less sensible abatement in the price. Again, account must be taken of the quantitative factor in the saleableness of commodities. Some commodities, in consequence of development of markets and speculation, are able at any time to find a sale in practically any quantity at economic, approximately economic prices. Other commodities can only find a sale at economic prices in smaller quantities, commensurate with the gradual growth of an effective demand fetching a relatively reduced price in the case of a greater supply.